I'm gonna turn these giant pieces of plastic into a real life naval cannon from Fallout. In the Fallout game series, there's a weapon called the Broadsider, and it's a cannon that you can carry around on a little rig and shoot from the hip, which makes no sense at all because a naval cannon probably weighs somewhere between three and 500 pounds, but it's still a cool idea. And I can make one as long as I make it out of lighter materials. But you get to come along with me on the rest of my journey to find the parts that I need to make the Broadsider. This is the part of the build. It's time consuming. Nothing gets accomplished. You just gotta go get stuff. Hello. Right here. Normal size tennis ball. Bigger tennis ball. Biggest tennis ball. I'm cleaning them out. <laughs> The difficult part of this shooting tennis balls is that tennis balls are two and a half inches across and one and a half inch, two inch, three inch PVC are common sizes. Two and a half inch is incredibly rare. So it's almost impossible to get that stuff unless you special order it. But if I use this, this is to scale for the cannonballs and it's four inches and it fits absolutely perfectly inside of four inch PVC. So now I can do it to scale and I have cannonballs that won't put gigantic holes in things. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> tannerite, big bags of tannerite. <laughs> oh my God, look at the size of the rope. It's perfect. This makes this whole project so much easier. I think this will be fine. People wonder why my hands get so dirty. Just touching this stuff. <laughs> That's bad. Do they work right now? Yes, they work. And it's a flashlight. Yeah. <laughs> Always keep your metal clean and dry. <laughs> the first thing that's necessary for me to do to figure out the size of this thing is to measure pictures from the game. So I get approximate sizes of characters in the game and then I scale that and figure out what my scale multiplier is to figure out the size for this stuff in real life. So I assumed that the character in the game is between 5'9 and 5'10 because I know that this thing is gonna be absolutely gigantic anyway. And then I measured a picture and based on that picture specifically, I can get my ratio for how long the cannon should be. Which then I made reference pictures of the cannon from different angles so that I can get the sizes for the different parts. And in this main picture where I get most of my measurements from, the cannon is 243 millimeters long with the actual length of the cannon that I modeled in Fusion 360, which was copied from a picture that I put on a canvas in there to make sure that it was perfectly accurate. That will be 1,346.5 millimeters long, which gives me a ratio of 5.54115. So I multiply all of the lengths that I measure on this sheet by that number, and that gives me the size in real life. Simple, right? But I can't just do this one. I need multiple angles. So I need the front, the back, the top, the bottom. It's time consuming, but I promise it's not that hard. I've got all my parts. Get these things cut to length. Start putting it together. I borrowed this big heavy saw to cut all the metal and plastic parts from a friend of mine. This is gonna make it a lot easier to get nice, straight, even 90 degree cuts on everything, which will be necessary for this to get put together efficiently. The factory cut on this tube is perfectly square. That's really nice. So I'm gonna try to do that also with this thing. Bingo, it'll work. So I took a bunch of notes to make sure that I don't screw this up because there are a lot of ratios that I'm dealing with with getting this thing cut correctly. The first problem is that I need a decent, at least a decent chamber to barrel ratio for this to work the way that it should and consistently. This big pipe is six inches and it is my chamber and it is schedule 40 PVC and it's rated to 180 PSI. It's difficult to find PVC that's this big that is pressure rated, but it's necessary for this because there's gonna be an explosion in the chamber and it needs to be able to handle the pressure from it. This needs to go that way. Cutting this pipe to 17 and a quarter nets me an overall 
chamber length of 19. And then with my barrel size, in ratio to the size of the cannon, I get a chamber to barrel ratio of 1.49 ish. The most agreed upon ratio that I could find on the internet is 1.5. That's what people said works pretty well. I did find conflicting arguments, but I don't have time to test all of them. And this stuff is really expensive. So I'm going with the most agreed upon number. Here we go. Also, the pipe is really big. So I have to try to carefully line it up as ridiculous as this seems right now, to get through it in multiple cuts. This blade would have to be absolutely gigantic for me to get this thing in one go. Now that I've chopped off reasonably close, I can trim it and make it exactly where I need it to be. Nice and even, now I just gotta cut my barrel, which is far smaller and will be a lot easier. 29 inches for the barrel. Now with these being cut to the right ratio, that might be good, it might be bad. I'll probably get an efficient pop to push the tennis ball out, but I don't care if the ratio is not right because if I get a big barf of flame whenever I shoot it, I think that'll be cool. Just don't want it to be under ratio because then it won't shoot well and I won't get fire out of it. This project was actually suggested by one of my Patreon supporters. When Shane the Destroyer sent me the information for this, it wasn't exactly what I'm doing with it, but uh, he did give me the good idea to build this from Fallout, which is a really cool thing. And the part that I'm about to do right now is very, oh my goodness. And the part that I'm, and the part that I'm about to do right now is critical that I do it very well. Making sure this is glued together well is absolutely critical for me to make sure that this doesn't come apart when I use it. Propane's maximum explosive pressure, if the propane is mixed stoichiometrically with atmosphere at atmospheric pressure, not compressed when it explodes, is 120 PSI, which means the maximum if I use propane will be 120 PSI of pressure inside of my chamber. And that's if the ball doesn't move. So I wouldn't be right at that. But even if I do reach right at that, the amount of force that's pushing on this end cap, square inches times the 120 PSI, means there's about 4,000 pounds of pressure pushing on this cap, trying to separate these parts. So making sure they are glued well is very important because otherwise parts of it come off, which means making sure the parts are clean, primed, that was open still, <laughs> and glued thoroughly. Good thing all this is getting covered up. <laughs> that adhesive doesn't just stick the two parts together. This adhesive is actually a cement. It dissolves the plastic and as it dries, the plastic reforms as one part. It's not actually just glued. It becomes one solid piece of plastic. It's also important to make sure that you have the right adhesive because these adhesives come in different grades and they're rated for different size pipe, whether it's pressure rated or not. This is for six inch pipe, pressure rated. Oh, I'm gonna squish the can. Grip. The primer ate Alex Taylor's name. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. <laughs> if you want your name on the table, you can be a patron for just a dollar a month and have your name eaten by PVC Primer, just like Alex Taylor did. And you'll get access to extra content that I don't post on YouTube and the satisfaction of knowing that you help support the channel. Link in the description. And I'm gonna send the 3D files of the Canon that I made, which you'll see later in this build to all of my Patreon patrons. I need to try to do this as quick as I can because once the solvent in this starts to dry, the plastic goes back to being a solid instead of a liquid and then they don't get glued together. And with a pipe this big, it takes a fair amount of force to push them together. So I need to go fast, make sure that it's still wet. And I need to be prepared when I start pushing it together because it pushes the glue apart and it starts to stick almost immediately. So I need to apply a huge amount of force right away to make sure these are very solidly adhered. I'm gonna push really hard, really fast. Ah, I can't get enough pressure on it. Ah. There we go. See that? Fully seated the whole way around. It's okay to have a little bit of squeeze out because you want to be sure that this is fully bonded the whole way. That's one connection done. I need to put the reducer in this end, this one here and the barrel into the reducer, but you should be doing this with a respirator on. And I can't do that and talk to the camera at the same time. So I'll see you when I'm done. All done. Have you ever seen a tennis ball launcher this big? <laughs> I'm sure somebody has, but I haven't. This thing is gonna be crazy. This is rated at 180. This PVC is difficult to find. I didn't take you on that shopping trip because it took me four hours 
to go get this stuff from a place very far away because it was the only place I could find it. Absolutely necessary though, because that 180 PSI is a working pressure. It's not a burst pressure. I don't know what the burst pressure is on this. They don't tell you that. 120 PSI maximum doesn't even get close to the working pressure, which means it's not even remotely close to the burst pressure. So this thing will be totally safe, at least with propane. But the United States Air Force used this same type of PVC to make a potato cannon. They used acetylene in it and it worked just fine for them. So I know that there's a possibility that I can step up the fuel that I use. But with this finished, now I need to move on to making the metal frame, which everything is going to be as accurate to the game as possible for this, but still be functional. While I build the metal frame, I'm going to show you how I find my scale ratios to make sure that everything is perfectly accurate to the game. Helps if you plug it in. <laughs> These hoops are actually pretty difficult to figure out where they're supposed to be bent. And after doing a lot of figuring, I have found a way to be able to set this up to bend them so that they're actually matching and they look the way they do in the game. I don't have very good reference pictures, but the one that I do have shows that all the bends are the same angle, at least for the first bend. After that, it changes and they're all different lengths. If I do my ratios and measure these lengths and I go from each end, I can work towards the center and then I have a reasonable idea of how long the middle is gonna be, but I also have to account for the bend radius. So I can do that by measuring from the ends because the ends are what matter because those connect to the rails that tie the entire thing together. Six, 14. With my bends marked, there's going to be different bend locations for the rail that goes on the outside of the rail because it has a different radius around it. So if I find the center of this, I can do a little trick, which is I'll put, when I put these together, I'm going to work from the outside in on the big one. And then when the little one gets connected to it, I'll work from the inside out. The only mark I need on my little strip is the halfway mark because it is going to be built off of this. When I calculated for the thickness of the material and the bends that it's gonna take, I need this to have a quarter inch of space the entire way around when it sits on top of the big piece. And it just so happens that I need a quarter inch of extra material on each end to make that happen. So they end up being exactly the same length. The only location on this strip that's gonna have bolts in it is the end where it's tied to the rail. The rest of it is just two pieces of metal from the picture sitting on top of each other, but that doesn't work in real life. So I'm going to do plug welds, which I'll mark with dots on steel because steel is springy. So when I'm trying to bend two pieces together to match exactly, it doesn't work very easily. So I'm gonna do plug welds at specific locations to make sure the bends stay nice and tight and it acts as one piece of metal, even though it's not welded the whole way. Pro tip, keep old junk calipers laying around because you can use these as a scribe tool so that it makes this fast and you're not ruining a good set. Just to make sure I don't forget and weld a bolt hole shut and put big X's across where I'm gonna drill the holes for bolts to go through. That way I have circles on the weldy holes and X's on the bolt holes. Normally I'd clamp the metal down, but this piece is so long I have enough leverage that I can definitely hold this still while I'm drilling. I don't really need to deburr the holes, but that little bit of a lip that's on there is gonna hold the two pieces of metal apart, and I don't want that. I want them to look almost like they're one piece, but not welded on the sides. These are all old used fasteners that I found. And the reason I dug through there to find these old rusty, ugly parts is because it fits with the aesthetic of the build instead of just going and getting shiny, brand new hardware from the hardware store and saving money. I had a thought, instead of cleaning the scale off the steel and then preheating it to make sure that my welds stick when I do these plug welds, if I drill, peck drill, just a little bit of material out from roughly the same location as those holes, It'll give me a nice little place where my weld will bite. It's kind of like cutting bevels on a weld. Well, not peck drill. I'm gonna half drill some holes before I put this together. I'm doing this first rail on the back here, the hoop that goes around the back of it. And this is the sketchiest part of the build because I don't have any way to tell what these angles are. So what I'm gonna do is eyeball it. And it's just a matter of looking at the picture 
and seeing if I've got this matching the angle. So then I just bring this over here and I will hold it up to the steel as I'm bending it and wait until I'm at that angle and then I'll move on to the next one. Right on the money. As much as it doesn't seem like it, this is actually a delicate process because if I get these bends wrong, it's going to lead to problems with alignment and mounting things on the broadsider in the future once I start putting everything together. So these have to be accurate. Oh man, so close. Perfect. Almost. Hoop number one. Time to weld the outside to it. Here we go. No turning back. And now it's one piece. It's not easy to drill steel with a hand drill. Come on. There it goes. The guts of the cannon are complete and the frame itself is nearly finished, but there's still a lot to do. I need to get this mounted correctly inside of the frame and there's a lot of stuff that I need to put on to make this the most accurate fallout weapon I have ever made and still be functional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Was that a good one? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. cool.